Hi, it's Richard Dwyer. I'm a Bay Area lawyer, Stanford grad. Here online I have a um, somewhat successful series of videos um, that discuss sports under the moniker gamblersadvisory.com. Let's get serious for a moment and let's discuss the Kennedy assassination. Now I understand this is a very charged subject, but now, and it's 2013, the public has a better appreciation of how the criminal justice system works. We've had several high profile public trials that were televised, right? Trials involving people like O.J. Simpson, Robert Blake, Michael Jackson, among others, right? Now, with regard to the Kennedy assassination, while it's fair to say that I don't know whether or not Lee Harvey Oswald killed John Fitzgerald Kennedy. What I do believe is that there are two witnesses who would have established reasonable doubt that would have prevented Lee Harvey Oswald from being convicted of the crime. Right, let's talk about those two witnesses. And I understand many of the conspiracy theories have been disproven. I've read the work of Gerald Posner. He believes Oswald was the sole assassin. And that's a very well-researched book. But let's understand the legal standard. It's proof beyond a reasonable doubt of guilt. If there's any credible evidence that creates a reasonable doubt and I understand that the jury clearly would be weighing the demeanor and veracity and credibility of each witness but if there's any evidence that creates a reasonable doubt then legally the jury should acquit the defendant right now Let's talk about the two witnesses. I encourage everyone to go online. The testimony of one of the witnesses under oath is online, right? Understand too, there is a visual interview, right? Videotaped interview of this witness. And he is Lee Bowers. Now Bowers was a railroad, <laughs> Bowers was a railroad worker right understand in college he was a religion major this is a guy with no known history of anything untoward he had actually worked for more than a decade with the railroads now understand you've heard of the glass the grassy knoll bowers was working behind the grassy no at the time of the assassination right he in fact was working from an elevated position he could look down on the grassy no now forget all these theories about what took place on the grassy no involving a badge man and all this other stuff you actually had an eyewitness behind the grassy no at the time of the assassination, right? I would argue this is some of the best evidence possible. Now understand what Bowers told assassination researcher Mark Lane on film in a videotaped interview was that at the time of the assassination, right, he actually saw from right around the grassy knoll area, a little bit to the side of the grassy knoll. Here's the quote. He saw 
a flash of light or smoke. In other words, the President of the United States gets assassinated right in front of the grassy knoll. And there is a witness behind the grassy knoll who's working. Understand, that's the reason why he's near Dealey Plaza. He's working. Right? He's not even there to see the president. He's just doing his job. And as he's doing his job, he looks up. The president of the United States is part of a limousine motorcade on the road in front of him. And as the president gets shot, he sees his words, a flash of light or smoke. Now, I understand his testimony to the Warren Commission didn't clearly state that he saw a flash of light or smoke. But he wasn't asked that question. Right? The interviewer danced around and asked a series of other questions. Right? The point is simply, if Lee Bowers gave testimony consistent with his videotaped interview that he gave to Mark Lane. If he gave that testimony before a jury, that testimony would go an awfully long way in the hands of a skilled defense attorney in terms of making the argument that the shot that killed Kennedy didn't come from the Texas School Book Depository where Oswald was, but rather came from that grassy knoll area. All right, let's go further. The second witness, right, is Dr. Charles Crenshaw. Now, he happened to be a doctor at Parkland Hospital who examined Kennedy right after the president had been shot. Now, we've seen the autopsy photos, but understand there are doctors who examined Kennedy who witnessed the wounds firsthand who contradict the autopsy photos. Charles Crenshaw is one of them. Understand, Crenshaw was the doctor who right after Jackie Kennedy was told that her husband was no longer with us. Right? It was Crenshaw who put his arm around Jackie Kennedy to console her. Right Now, Crenshaw is steadfast in saying that it's clear that there was a baseball-sized wound in the back of the president's head Right? Not the front of the head, but the back of the president's head. And that his wounds indicated that he had been shot from the front, not the back. Right? If the president were shot from the front and not the back, understand Lee Harvey Oswald could not have fired the fatal shot. Right, so, and I encourage people to look up these witnesses online. One's Lee Bowers, spelled B-O-W-E-R-S. The other is Dr. Charles Crenshaw, right? My point is simply this. For Oswald to prove not his innocence, but reasonable doubt, that's all he has to prove. Not that he didn't do the crime but that there's reasonable doubt on whether he did the crime. He wouldn't have to bring in a lot of fancy evidence. He wouldn't have to hire a lot of big time experts. All he'd have to do is bring in the rail, <laughs> the railroad worker who was behind the grassy knoll at the time of the assassination, Lee Bowers, 
and the Parkland Hospital doctor who looked at the president's wounds moments after the shooting, right? Just those two witnesses would have given Oswald a chance to beat the murder charge, right? So don't get distracted by all this other stuff. Just look at these two guys, right? What they're telling you is one, there is a flash of light or smoke by the grassy knoll, right? Just right next to the grassy knoll at the moment the president is shot. And two, that the president's wounds indicate that he was shot from the front. Let me tell you, this defense would be much more meaningful than the defenses in the O.J. Simpson and Robert Blake cases. And understand, in those cases, the defendants beat the charge. Let me hear from you. Let's have a spirited public conversation here online. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.